I think the one thing that bothers me more than anything about the end of Apocalypse Driving is that I will not be able to go into the bank anymore with uh, this mask on. So hopefully, you know, we get to use these masks as long as possible because I really enjoy it. I, I love walking into the bank with this thing on. I love it. I love being able to do it. Yeah. Got a little social distancing square right there. Are you? Okay. Got the little social distancing square right here. Looks like it's a pretty quiet day. Why not? Everybody's coming in, just chilling. It's like now, now they're trying to complicate my life. I don't get to wear my mask at the bank. I, I never believed that I'd be able to walk into a bank dressed like this and, and live. And it's so cool. One of your little envelopes would be cool. Sure. Thanks. Thank you very much. Have a great day. We are indeed a people in the mask. No one cared who I was before I put on the mask. If you took it off, it might be quite painful for you. That I decided to dedicate my YouTube to being a Jeep product YouTube. I'm really, really glad about that. Because I have to say, of all the cars that I've ever bought, the Jeep Grand Cherokee is easily the best car. Unlike, say, a Mercedes S-Class or, say, a BMW 7, where you're constantly worried about somebody hitting your car and damaging it really bad and it costing like ridiculously expensive uh, repairs and whatnot. A uh, Jeep is more like a truck in that you've got a, you got some strong bumpers, even though the uh, cosmetics are mostly plastic, they can easily replace these things. They can easily paint this car. You don't have to worry about having these uh, premier exclusive paint jobs. You don't have to, you just don't have to worry. And that's the whole thing. That's the, that's the thing I like about this car. Come winter, we've got the all-wheel drive system, and you got the heated seats, you got the uh, heated steering wheel. You don't have to pay extra for that because it was pretty much included in this package. I know uh, SRT has pretty much come fully loaded with the, with the panel roof and the heated and cooled front seats, heated rear seats. Uh, and then, like here, you, you know, you got the uh, adaptive cruise control. You just hit one button, boom. And then you hit another button. Look at this Honda. This Honda doesn't have heated and cooled seats. It, it has a buzzy engine that's annoying, but it doesn't have heated and cooled seats. And if I want to hit my adaptive cruise control so I don't have to pay so much attention to who is in front of me, all you got to do is just hit that set button. And the set button puts you right as it was at 58 miles per hour. And the car basically will handle the uh, acceleration and deceleration and emergency braking by itself. You know, it's a comfortable ride. The engine sounds great. There's a lot of people constantly ask me, they're like, hey, should I get a Jeep SRT? Should I get one used? My thing is, if you get it used, you have to be careful to make sure that the braking system is relatively new. So that this way you don't have to repair braking parts. I would also say you have to make sure you have good tires. Basically, the, you know, the typical due diligence you're supposed to do when you buy a used car. But as far as a, a brand new one, oh, hell yeah, absolutely. I mean, the product is fabulous. I, uh, if I didn't like it, I would have already switched to something else. If I didn't like it, I wouldn't have bought one and then switched to another one. I would have bought something else entirely. It just does everything it has to do. And the funny thing is, like cars like these MDXs, you can get these cars fully loaded for less than $50,000. This car right here, this car was a whole $30,000 more than even a loaded version of one of those. Why? Because of the engine. 
You can't get these V8 engines anymore. Now your only choice is a Toyota like this Toyota right here. Boring. Yeah, you save money on gas and everything, but I tell you, I, I, I'd be so bored in one of those. I, I just wouldn't even want to drive. I would rather have a wife drive or something. It's like, I wouldn't even want to drive it. It's just, just so boring. It's like, you know, I, I don't let anybody drive my cars because I'm afraid that they might hurt them or injure them in some way. But uh, if I had a Toyota like that, I'd let whoever else wants to drive, drive because I wouldn't want to be caught dead in it, honestly. And then you see that little Honda? No, no thank you, no thank you. And then there's this Lexus, the RX350. Yeah, those have sold really well. And then they have the NX models. Why are you slowing down? They have the NX, the RX, but those are really boring. I, I, I just don't want that. I, I, I'm sorry, I, I just don't want that. You know, I'm sorry. It's like, it's like the Jeep just gives you just so much. And I've ranted enough about the Jeep. I've ranted enough about, unlike cars that are way more expensive, how right down here, I've got the heated, cooled seats, the ventilated seats right there. They got the heated wheel. Most cars, they try to rip you off. They try, look at this guy. He, you know he's happy because he still has his, he has a 2012. I would keep this car like forever if the repairs on it would never rise in cost. Because ultimately, as time goes on, the dealerships, they basically stop making parts and they want you to upgrade because they want to get you into a brand new, uh, something brand new. And they want to stop making the old style and they want to make the new style. Like for on this car right here, this car is a 2015. If I want to uh, upgrade the, the look of the bumper, I can get a 2017 or 2018 bumper because all of these cars are pretty much they sharing parts. In fact, most of the interior is basically shared with the newer cars. You have to replace sometimes the wiring harnesses, but for the most part, most of the parts are about the same. They're um, shared, I should say. So um, I have to say the only downside with having a 6.4 liter engine is gas. As you can see, my gas light is on, and as you can see, I'm very low on fuel. And uh, right now I'm on my way to one of my favorite uh, places to get gas, and I'm gonna get gas. So the question is, what about an electric car? Would you ever buy a Tesla for yourself? Like you saw me, I've done a number of videos on Tesla, mostly because I was a shareholder. And um, some people are always asking like, oh, would you get a Model Y? And I'm like, well, first of all, a Model Y is a nice car, but it's too small for me. The logical vehicle to buy would be either the Tesla Cybertruck or the Tesla Model X. I think the Cybertruck looks ridiculous. It should have been like a special trim as opposed to having a regular truck that looks more like this F-150 or a Tundra. I'm, I'm, I said F-150, but it's really a Tundra. But the reason why I said F-150 is because the Tundra basically copied a lot of the design elements of the F-150. The F-150 is pretty much the world's best selling truck. Every single truck maker has done their best to make their trucks more like that F-150 back then. And the thing about it is, because the F-150 is so popular, you would have thought that Tesla would have made the Cybertruck look just like the F-150. Instead, they bring out this radically ridiculous design. And if they really wanted to have a flying buttress flatbed in the back, they could have made it more like the Chevy Avalanche. And I think nobody would have complained. Nobody would have said, yeah, that looks ridiculous. If they had made it more like a Chevy Avalanche, I think it would have turned out perfect. Or even more like a Cadillac EXT. But what Tesla has going for it is unlike these horrible Porsches, the Tesla is bigger and it's more spacious because this Taycan right here is really, really small. I was actually gonna do a video and show you driving this car, but it was so small. I could barely fit in it. So I was like, nah, I'm not gonna, I'm not even gonna bother with that thing because it's just too small and I, I just didn't even want to be bothered. And Taycan's also cost more than Tesla Ludicrous mode as P, you know, P100 Model S's. And they also obviously cost more than the Model X. Most people who are gonna spend $130,000, they're not buying that Porsche. They're gonna buy a Model X, but they're gonna buy a Model S. Now, within my business, 
we have a couple of Teslas. I don't usually talk about them. I don't want to, uh, you know, I don't want to have any issues where, you know, cars get recognized in public. So I don't put stickers on cars. Like, you know how most YouTubers have a YouTube sticker or most Instagrammers have an Instagram sticker. I don't tag anything. I, in fact, I don't want you knowing what I'm trying, but honestly, it's like, besides the videos, I this way it makes it so that you never have to worry about somebody targeting you and seeing you on Instagram and targeting you and coming to your house and trying to steal your cars. And this happens because I know somebody who just lost a track hawk, got stolen right from in front of their house. And you never also have to worry about cops recognizing you on the, uh, on the uh, road and deciding to harass you because they don't like you. It's, it's better to be anonymous, you know, or as, as best you can be anonymous. But uh, that's just how I roll. Some people roll differently. That's just how I roll. But um, let's uh, talk about gas prices. This country purposefully keeps the prices of gas down by importing oil from countries that we can control, like Saudi Arabia, boycotting countries like Venezuela, and then trying to blame their poverty on communism, when in reality, Venezuela has more oil than any oil reserve on the entire planet. And if we allowed Venezuela to have access to, you know, the free market like the Republicans talk about, gasoline prices for us would drop to probably about a dollar a gallon, maybe less, because you have all of that extra oil pouring in. Think about what happened before coronavirus hit. When coronavirus hit, you had Russia and Iran having an oil war and gas prices suddenly started to drop. Then once you felt coronavirus's effects, gas prices dropped even more because everybody was staying home. There's no reason why we can't have gas below a dollar a gallon for premium. There's no reason why we can't. However, it's geo oil politics and trying to keep oil producing companies down and oil producing countries trying to keep them under our yoke and force them not to overproduce. That's the reason why gas prices are high. However, there's a break even point. The average American would riot if gas prices went to three or four dollars a gallon because all of a sudden they wouldn't be able to afford anything. So what do we do? We control the price of gas and we make it so we make it so that when you get gas, it's never so expensive that the average person can't afford to put gas in their little uh, Forerunner or their silly little Lexus. So ultimately, gas prices are going to continue to be controlled by politics rather than subject to free market economics. Now, I know a lot of people get triggered by the things I say, and I honestly don't care. And I also know that there's a lot of people, especially Republican voting Trump sycophants, who uh, would probably argue with what I say. I really don't care because, you know, I'm going to say it anyway. And um, just take a look at this BP gas station. How much is gas here? Let's let's take a look. What is this? Um, they have the sign right up there. The thing about it is one of the reasons why electric cars haven't done better is, number one, because they usually were too small. And number two, I think the main reason, it's because they were too expensive. And then there's a third main reason. I'll say there's three main reasons. I think the third main reason is that gas prices have never been so high for such a long period of time. Look, this guy's got a Model 3. Gas prices have never been so high that it forced people to say, yeah, I'm going to go get a, uh, a Tesla. Look at this. Regular is 217 and I don't know what premium is there, but if regular is 217 you can bet the premium is probably close to like 265 or something. But uh, I'll, look, uh, I'll look at the next place. But, um... Gas prices aren't so high that it forces people into an electric car. Therefore, Tesla has had to sell their cars a different way. They've had to talk about, oh, well, we've got auto driving and it can drive itself and it's got this feature. It doesn't have heated and cooled seats standard, which it should. But, oh, yeah, listen, if you get the plug for your house, you can be gas free and you'll never have to go to a gas station ever. But the thing about it is, because the mass market uses oil and gas, especially home heating oil, the simple fact is Tesla has had a hard time making a case for itself beyond being a luxury niche vehicle. If gas prices were to 
suddenly rapidly spiked to four dollars and five dollars and the price of the Teslas were somehow able to remain the same around fifty thousand to a hundred thousand dollars then you'd see more and more Teslas like that Model X you'd see more and more of them suddenly because people would have no choice but to drive an electric car problem is now you got to figure out a place to charge it so if you have a house which a lot of people don't or if you have a house with a garage which a lot of people don't you'd have to figure out a place to charge it airports usually have chargers malls more and more have chargers but having to charge one of these cars is just annoying you know it's it's it's, it's having to go out of your way to do something that you normally wouldn't have to go out of your way to do so um i would say that as long as gas prices remain controlled, it's always going to mean that people, for the most part, are more likely going to buy a gas car than they are going to buy an electric car. As time goes on and electric cars get cheaper and cheaper to produce, maybe that will change. But for the time being, I think more people like the flexibility of having a gas car. Let's get over here next to this SRT WK1 Jeep. I got a guy who's on my Facebook, and this dude's trying to tell me how much better that W... What, this guy's asleep. Come on, wake up. Wake up. So this guy is asleep, so I'm going to get from behind him. But uh, in any event, he must know he's on tape. What is this guy doing? You see, that sound right there is the reason why you're going to have such a hard time replacing gas-powered vehicles with electric cars. The mere fact that you could be driving really low and you could sound like your car is a monster. Electric cars can't do that. That guy's just, he's just, I, I don't know what that guy's doing. He's just diddly dawdling. He's like, yeah, I got an all blacked out WK1. I can do whatever I want. I can drive all slow and everything. This guy. And his car is so blacked out that it's illegal because the cops will pull you over for those tents in a minute. And they give you like a hundred dollar ticket per window. That's one of the reasons why you don't see me tip my cars because so I, I just don't need the extra hassle. I don't need anybody trying to put their knee in my neck over some tents. It's like I'm not I'm not interested in getting shot over a traffic stop. You know, I'm just not interested. Illegal tents. I mean, come on, really? But anyway, the mere fact that you can have a cool sounding gas car and it can sound cool and loud and obnoxious and wake your neighbors up in the morning. Electric cars can't do that. That's why in my opinion, electric cars are mostly appliances. Like they're cool cars for the most part to get you from point A to point B. He's purposefully staying back there. This guy, look at this guy. Oh, he's, he's turning. Okay, yeah, but these things are appliances. Electrical, like that Tesla Model S. Appliances, that's what they are, they're appliances. And um, as long as they remain as appliances, a lot of people aren't going to be so excited to buy them. That's the reality. Yep. So we got a little bit of rain today, but otherwise it's not too bad. It's it's actually a decent day right here. It's not too bad. What is this? All right, let me get over here. I like being, see, whenever you have an SRT, you're usually gonna end up being the first person in the, uh, next to this light. Oh, you're usually gonna end up being first. So that means that you always have to be ready to drag race who's ever next to you. So in order to do that, all you gotta do is you go down here and you hit that one time and then you have sport mode, which basically allows you to take off from these lights as if you just escaped out of hell. Now he has a Ford Explorer and it's not even an ST model. So I already know that his maximum capable acceleration is much lower than mine. So basically, there's, you know, he can't possibly out accelerate me. And that's the beautiful thing about SRT products. I, it, like, you, when you know that 95% of the people on the road can't look at that guy, he's just gone. It's like, it's like a comet and it just disappears. It's like gone. It's like he's just gone. So when you know that 95% of the people on the road, with the exception of maybe a Lamborghini, or maybe like one of those really, really fast, like McLarens or something. When you know that if you have like a Trackhawk or a Hellcat or a SRT anything versus any of these four cylinders or any of these six cylinders, when you know, look, he's trying to catch up. When you know that 95% of the people on the road are gonna most likely have something where they can't possibly challenge you, that's the reason why you buy a car like this. And right here we have a gas station. This is a Speedway because great power comes with great 
gas price costs. So what are we paying today? Two fifty-seven for premium. How nice. How nice. Lovely. Okay, so let's just put her in park. Then go out and get some gas. And that and that right there, that right there is uh, that's that's the consequence. That's the consequence. That and shredded tires. You burn up your tires real quick with one of these things. No tire, your tires just get burned away. But it's worth it. It's absolutely worth it. It's abs it's absolutely worth it. So we got two fifty seven. Uh -huh. I usually just drop in about thirty dollars at a time. That's one of the reasons why I'm always out of gas. It's like the only time I usually fill up is if I'm taking a long trip. Yeah. And there's also logic behind me doing thirty dollars usually at a time because here's the thing: I usually pay on my credit card, so that means that I'm going to get points from it. The other thing is my CPA uh, can easily take my gas uh, payments via credit card and uh, use them as business class tax deductions. Now, why is that? Well, it's because YouTube actually turns out to be a, uh, a 1099 form. So there's a strategic way that you go about doing certain things. Okay, so let's see how much did $30 give us? Wow, half the tank, half, about half the tank, at $2.57, that's about half a tick. So then you hit the eco button. Some people say, well, does the eco button really work? Well, considering uh, I'm averaging, what is this, 13.1 miles per gallon after having driven to Pennsylvania, which was like, uh, what, damn near, uh, what was that, like damn near 300 round trip, 300 mile round trip. Well, I don't know, you be the judge. But to tell you the God's honest truth, one of these, uh, 6.4 liter monsters you're, you're really not going to do much better unless you're doing nothing but highway driving you're not going to average much better than about uh, 17 or 18 and there's some people who try to you know pretend that they're doing better than that maybe it's because of altitude maybe it's because uh they i don't know I, I don't know what it could possibly be maybe they're really light people maybe they only weigh like 100 pounds or something i don't know but uh, for the most part, I have never seen an SRT product maintain an average over 16 gallons with me drive, well, 16 miles per gallon with me driving. I've never seen it. So and I'm just saying, and I'm just saying it out of my own personal experience. I've just never seen it. So I got a Tesla behind me. This guy's got the Tesla Model S right here, and right now, um, he's just uh, chilling there. And I got these people right here. They look like they're having a good time. What's up? Yeah, he, he looks like he's having a good time. He's in his Camry right there. He's having a great time. That's all good. Everybody's having dancing and singing in the car. They got the music up. They're dancing and singing. That's good. Yeah. Okay. But, um, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. It's like, here you are. It's like you're surrounded by V6s, four cylinders. There's a couple of V8s, but it's usually the trucks. And that's about it. It's usually like the big work trucks. And yeah, well, they look like they're having a good time. That's wonderful. All right. So, uh, yeah, that's about that. Let's pass these baseballs. Okay, so, um, yeah, I guess that's about all I really, really needed to say. Because the thing about it is, my, my entire blog has basically been about the Jeep SRT. You know, so many other people do vlogs on different cars, but I, I really think that this is the car. And his wife, uh, they just purchased a Model Y, and Demonology absolutely loves his Model Y. His wife loves the Model Y. And it, there's a lot to love. It's a, it's a spacious, small, it's not a big car, however, because it makes so much use of space, it's actually a small car that's actually pretty big inside. Me, personally, I actually prefer the Model X for a couple of simple reasons. First of all, you take a look at this uh, dash right here. When you look at my dash, I actually have a speedometer boom right there where it's supposed to be in front of me. And then there's the computer right there and whatnot. And the computer has, um, you know, it's vertical. A lot of other manufacturers are switching to vertical computers. Me personally, I'm not crazy about infotainment systems on other uh, company cars that are vertical, I think that they're better off leaving the thing um, 
what is it called? I think they're better off leaving theirs horizontal. I think my favorite infotainment system besides Chrysler Uconnect is actually uh, Mercedes-Benz, uh, what's it called? The uh, M-Bux system where you have one screen here, one screen and it just stretches across. Because Mercedes, they make everything so expansive and I really, really, really like that. However, the Tesla is just, a, it's a different type of car altogether. And it's, I mean, you know, the thing about it is this kind of car, it's, it's really awesome if you can afford one of these. And in my opinion, it's more of a, um, it's more of an appliance, you know, it's like, it's not very loud. It's not loud at all. Um, how should I say you get the feeling, you know, that you're in something futuristic because you get these gigantic windows and whatnot. And um, I also like the fact that Tesla still has a system where uh, you hit the uh, voice control button and uh, you can pretty much tell it to play music and it'll look up a song and whatnot and it'll find that song and when it finds it, it'll just play that song and everything. So uh, for the most part, um, you can listen to basically whatever you want to listen to. And that's a really good thing. Um, interior, as you can see, is very, it's pretty spacious. However, what I will say is they would have been smarter to make this car with regular doors because if this car had regular doors it's like you wouldn't have this loss of ceiling space the problem with the model x however is that its gimmick is the fact that they have those uh those gold doors on the thing and um i would say that more people would probably like this car if they could afford it and that's not insulting this thing is really expensive. However, my Jeep and this car basically cost the same amount. Like if you wanna get a ludicrous Model X, you're gonna pay the same amount that you pay for a Jeep Trackhawk. The difference is you don't get the loud sound of power. And there's also a lot of interior features you don't get. Like for instance, you only get, uh, you get heated seats, but you don't get cooled seats. I'm very disappointed about heated seats, no cooled seats. Um, what this does have, if you're paying $110,000 in over the Jeep, is this has the ludicrous mode acceleration. Like when you hit the driving tab right there, you see I got ludicrous, ludicrous plus, and it's asking, oh, you sure you wanna push the limits? Yes, bring it on. And then next thing you know, here you are, you, you're just drag racing everybody. Nobody can pretty much touch you, nobody at all. That's why people buy this car. Like when you, when you, this is what I'm doing for you right now. I hit the, what? Okay, yeah, so you can't, you can't be doing that because especially, you know, because this thing accelerate, this thing's a missile. This thing's basically, you know, it's funny that they have these electric trucks coming and with these new electric trucks, I mean, here you've got these things that have these electric motors and these trucks, trucks can do what? zero to 60 in four seconds uh, usually a diesel truck can only do like zero to 60 it takes like six to seven seconds minimum usually it takes 10 or more but when you've got one of these damn things when you got one of these damn things and you got that ludicrous and mind you mind you they have chill driving and they have sport and they have ludicrous right now if you're in chill or if you're in chill or sport right like here, here's a perfect beautiful beautiful right now we got a stoplight area i'm gonna throw it into chill right so we're gonna go into chill what I'm going to do is from this light, step on it, and we'll, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. But I think everybody already knows by now that ludicrous mode is, is monstrous. It's, it's extraordinarily powerful. It's something that no other type of vehicle can pretty much match unless you have like a Formula One drag car or something or a funny car. Nothing else can match the, the acceleration of a ludicrous Tesla or an electric car that's tuned for racing, specifically because these things have instantaneous torque, which means that it doesn't take any time for the torque to build up. It doesn't take any time for that uh, that burst of speed. It just it's in it's the speed of light, man. It's electricity. It's the speed of light. You can't beat that. And uh, yeah, I'm smart enough to know. Yeah, I can't drag race one of these things not unless I have a, t a track hawk. And even then, it would beat me in like the the. Um, the, the 50 foot, the 60 foot is going to beat me. However, because that engine starts to build up its power. Uh-oh, this is chill. Now see, chill, I floored it. Look at that. Look at that. Zero to, oh, oh my God. It's still, I have to say, the acceleration is pretty linear, which I think a lot of people like. Like my mom told me when she drove the Model Y, she said that she liked the fact that it, it had a, a nice smooth ride and she really liked that. 
Um, it was a lot smoother than the clunkiness of uh, that V6 that GM keeps using. But this time, what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw it into ludicrous. Now we're not gonna over we're not gonna overheat our battery or anything like that, like they try to do before they drag racing and whatnot. We're not gonna do that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna just throw it into ludicrous, and we're just gonna we're just gonna take off. We're just we're just gonna. It's like first of all, airplanes don't. Ah! And, and I, I mind you, I, I dropped my foot off of it for a second. Wow, Jesus Christ! Now that is not chill right there. That right there is ludicrous. They're jet airplanes that can't accelerate that fast. Whoop! Here we go again. Another light. I love being at the front of the light. I just love it. But uh, yeah, these things are uh, these things are incredible. I, I gotta say. That is the reason why, like back in 2012, when I first drove the P85, that's the reason why I bought stock in Tesla. And as you know, I recently sold mine. Now my family members, some of them have, what? Some of my family members have bought stock in Tesla uh, recently uh, when we had the dip in March. And uh, they're very happy. And uh, right now the stock price is up to about, what, $1,500. I'm not sure how much higher it can go. I'm not sure about the future of the stock because you never know. They could always try to do something like, I think Elon Musk at one point said he wanted to take it private or something like that. So the thing about it is, for the time being, anybody who's invested in this company is very happy because of the Model 3 and the Model Y boosting up share prices. So that's a good thing. But um, yeah, these things, these things are ridiculous. When it comes to acceleration, you can't beat them. When it comes to, um, how should I say look and feel they're very different i will say that i really prefer mercedes benz's interiors because i feel that they're more comfortable i will say even bmw I, I don't really talk much about bmws but i like the bmw 7 like this guy right here this rubicon's been following me he's like yeah when i get the 392 engine in my rubicon wrangler i'll be able to take on the Teslas that don't have ludicrous mode because the ludicrous mode Teslas are way too fast for me to take on. Somebody's got a beatbox. What's that? This chick right here has got the Grand Cherokee. But, uh, you know, I th the thing about it is ultimately, again, with these Model Xs, gas prices aren't so ridiculously high to force people into X, Ys, and 3s, or Ss even. Gas prices just they're not there yet and they because they're not that high it makes it so that many people are are not are a little adverse to going into electric but see i like the passing power these things this thing you have to drive this car in sport mode if you drive this thing in ludicrous mode regularly and you make the mistake of flooring that thing all the time this car feels it feels like it's stable but this thing man this thing is so fast it could just get away from you get away from you a little you know, these things are crazy. Absolutely crazy, these things. And then, obviously, you also have autopilot. So if you double tap this, it goes into autopilot. So autopilot right now is on. As you can see, it's slowing down for this guy right here. I didn't, I'm not touching it. I'm not using my foot. So I'm behind this Ford Focus ST. I have one hand on the wheel. And uh, basically, you know it's an autopilot, so as long as everything stays good, you're you know you're fine. Now the Model Y had uh, autopilot. It seemed to probably work just as well, if not better, than this one. I know they have the new summon feature where you can uh, summon the car to come to you. Um, but most of I, I'd say most of the Tesla's gimmicks are really and it's it, see the beautiful thing that I like about these is that again I didn't even touch the thing a guy behind me is blowing at me I didn't even touch it I'm just in fact I forgot I could kind of take my hand off the wheel but see there's a truck right there I don't want to I don't want to do that because look at this thing it's edging so close it gets so close to that line I'm, I'm waiting for this thing to try to turn itself a little and now it's noticing the truck the big truck and it edges away from the line and now it's looking at the line again it's watching the line and i and i'm afraid like i i it, it kind of makes me a little it makes me not want to take my hand off it but the thing about it is if you trust the car and you just keep your hand on it if you trust the car for the most part uh oh it's trying to no, see it's trying to no no you're not taking me over there where are you going whoa 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 let's slow down let's slow down <laughs> 
<laughs> You're not taking me over there, buddy. I didn't want to turn you. Okay, so I got an angry trucker behind me. This guy must be an ice road trucker. He's very upset. He's angry, shaking his head. He's like, yeah, this guy in the stupid electric car is keeping me from getting to work. I don't want to do that. Hey, look, Costco, they got a huge line. Well, it's, yeah, it's not so bad. It's like, there's a lot of people. It's like, it's amazing. You know, quarantine, these people are still shopping like that. Bottom line is this. Um, I like the regular car stuff. I want to have all my dials and gauges so it makes it easy for me to access certain things. I don't like having to go through the computer screen for every little detail. Like I like to be able to move up my uh, my wheel if I want to. Yeah, okay, I just turned auto steer off. It says it's temporarily unavailable. I personally want the car, whether it's electric or gas, to feel like a regular car. I understand that they're trying to cut down on buttons and they're trying to cut down on knobs, but my thing is I actually like having all that stuff because it, it allows me it allows me to, you know, it, it's not such a huge jump away from being like a regular car, but see with the Model 3 and the Model Y, to make it a cheaper to produce vehicle, they've reduced as many parts out of it as they possibly could. And then on top of that, I would say that they've tried to make the car um, futuristic in that they, you know, they, they, they basically want it to just be glass and steel. Now that might work for some people, but for me, it's like that, that those are just a couple of the things like the model three and the model Y. That's a couple of reasons why I can't foresee making that my personal daily driver. So watch this, watch this. I'm going to, I'm going to go to a street stop. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Okay, there we go. Okay, so yes, as you can see, that uh, took me less than nine seconds to get to 80 miles per hour. Nobody's surprised about that anymore. We already know that these things will take out Lamborghini Aventadors. We already know that McLaren pretty much can't touch these things. We already know Ferrari doesn't have a chance in hell. But, um, you know, it's, it's just, it, I have to say, it has a nice smooth ride. It's so quiet. And you kind of associate loud noise with speed. And because it doesn't have like a powerful exhaust or it doesn't even have an exhaust for you to work on and you can't straight pipe it and do any of that nonsense. I think what turns a lot of people off from this car is the fact that you can't use it to annoy other people. When you do that auto start in the morning and the car starts up, a lot of these people, they tune their car's exhaust specifically so that they'll annoy their neighbors. And um, this car doesn't allow you to do stuff like that. And uh, I would say, I would say a lot of people, they just, they want to feel like they're part of the car. They want to be able to work on it. These cars aren't designed for you to work on. These cars are designed for as soon as you finish using it, you basically wipe off the surfaces and you just, and that's it. it it's an appliance. It's like using a blender. Now, is that a bad thing? No, nah, I don't think so. I think it's actually, it can work. Some people like it. I mean, I would personally get addicted to never having to go to the gas station owning one of these things. But my problem is there's so many features missing. Like, for instance, I want my heated and cooled seats. Some people are like, oh, well, that's just a... I mean, like, no, I'm not... I don't think I should have to adapt to a car. I think it should have to adapt to me. And the mere fact that you can't order them because the heated and cooled seats use perforations in the leather, and these don't, the mere fact that I can't order them, that bothers me. And, and I, I would prefer to have those luxury amenities. I mean, yeah, this car is great if it's cold and you just want to heat the interior. But uh, what if I want to cool my butt? I mean, I should be able to do that. I will also say, what else? What else we got in here? Um, as far as the battery, you already know, these things will get about 350 miles. Uh, some people have said that Tesla has vastly overstated the amount of miles these things get, especially when you factor in uh, summertime cooling of the interior. And if you're factoring in cooling of the interior, yeah, you're going to get less mileage, obviously, because the battery is running to keep that air conditioner rolling. And uh, the higher you turn the air conditioner, obviously, the, you know, the battery will trickle out slowly. You get a little bit of that energy back with your regenerative braking. And this car is always in regenerative braking mode. Like, for instance, if I'm, if I'm driving right now by pushing the pedal, as soon as I take my foot off the pedal, this thing drops 
it's it, it it it's like it's so heavy it just wants to drop right back to zero now it's still coasting because i use creep driving i like to have my driving in creep if i put it in hold it would quickly go back to zero but i actually like creep mode you know i, I really like creep mode so that's, I mean, that, that's just what it is. It's, it's a very, very lovely vehicle. I know women love them. Um, it's a quiet vehicle. It's, it, it just does what it has to do. You know, it's like a ceiling fan. It's like you turn the ceiling fan on, the room gets colder. You turn it off, that's it, and that's it. And that, that's all it is. An appliance, a washing machine, a dryer electric appliance and i like it and you know it's funny that guy rich rebuilds i love watching his channel but you know it's so funny when he said you know what i was getting bored with electric cars what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna buy a gas car all of a sudden people started attacking him and you see i got the heated seats i can heat up the back part the back passenger i can heat they seat or I, and i could do it individually i could heat their seats or i could turn them all off and whatnot let me turn down the uh, air conditioner just a little but, uh, I mean, yeah, the thing, it does what it's got to do, you know? I, I would say because this cabin is so spacious and also because it's not too hot outside, yeah, I could drive around with the uh, temperature on, how should I say, um, low? But, like, what's going on? Uh, how's the highway looking? I was gonna, I was gonna get out and Nah, in fact, I, I'm not going to go down there because the highway is all wet, so I'm not even going to go bother down there. But um, I'll get out and, and, you know, show you what the car looks like again, you know, with the go-wing doors and all that stuff. But uh, what, what was I saying? Um, I, I would just like, I would like heated and cooled seats standard in anything I buy. I, right? It, it, it cuts down the amount of energy that I have to use to cool the uh, interior of the car as long as the seat is cooled and it also cuts down the amount of heat i have to use to heat the inside of the car as long as the seat is heated so i want them both and yeah i'm gonna keep saying it because i want them both i just feel that i should have it you know if kia can give you heated and cooled seats in a three thirty thousand dollar car then i think everybody should be able to do it okay especially if your car is costing a hundred and ten thousand dollars this this nissan Sentra does not have heated and cooled seats or a powerful engine or any excitement whatsoever so i don't want that that's prius yeah it gets 60 miles to a gallon but i don't use gallons at all in the tesla model x so yeah i mean there's so many options but the, you know the thing about it is this car costs twice as much as that prius so but yeah 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 i mean it, it's i i understand the reason why people want an electric car and I also understand the reason why they don't it's it's just so anesthetizing it's like it's not it just doesn't excite me I mean yeah it can it can boost its speed instantaneously but I need I need loud sound and 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 rush of engine hemi and this that and the other yeah but uh, that's that so what is it says it's averaging 378 uh watts per mile or i believe that's how you read it but the thing about it is when you charge one of these things up you're getting you're getting over 300 miles per charge for most people that's more than enough to get them back and forth to work and then they charge it on friday or it's saturday or sunday and considering we don't really drive every single day even before coronavirus i mean you know I, I'd say this is more than enough for most people. That's what I think. And my, so I guess here I'll ask the question, which would you prefer? And you could be honest, because it doesn't matter to me. You could be perfectly honest. Do you prefer the Jeep SRT or do you prefer the Tesla Model X? And let, oh snap, I shouldn't even be here. I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be here. Uh oh, let's get off here. Oops. My bad, my bad, my bad. I was about to get off on that X mission. Or the Tesla Model X. Look at these Suffolk cops. They got the blue and red and everything. These guys got the look like Judge Dredd cars over here. 
like, which one do you prefer? Do you prefer the Model X? Which I will say has more space inside than the Jeep SRT, with the exception of the cargo bed. There's not, a, there's not that much space back there. But uh, do you prefer the Jeep SRT or do you prefer the Model X? You can be perfectly honest. I don't really care. In fact, let's go right here into um, the uh, parking lot right here. And I'll just show you what the car looks like. But I, I will say this. I mean, if you, if you needed a retirement car, and especially if you live in a place where gas prices got you down, it's like, can't go wrong. Can't go wrong with one of these. These are... Uh, very, very nice. You may recognize this place as Uncle Giuseppe's Marketplace out in Melville. Uh, I go here all the time for food. They have great food. Um, Italian food. Uh, it's uh, gourmet. Everything's gourmet. My mom loves their uh, birthday cakes. Um, you know, they got great food. So, yeah, I'm just going to... What, what, what are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah, just, oh, this guy's not even paying attention. He's driving his truck around. He's not looking at me. Okay, so yeah. I'll just dr drive it right over here and just show you what the car looks like just so you see it. All right. Yeah, and, th and the, the, the crazy thing about it is because these cars are electronic, all you do to park is you just push this park button, and that's it. And things in park. And if you want to open the doors, you can go down here. The driver door opens with a push button. How about that? You can open the passenger door. You can open the gull wings. And it has a pause button. Oh my God. <laughs> One thing you'll also notice about having a Tesla is the uh, cooling systems are always active because it's pretty much always going to be cooling the uh, battery. You know. Yeah, so that that that's that's the the the, the gullwing door gimmick. I think that sold some people, but I think what ultimately killed this car was well, I, I shouldn't say killed this car. This car sells very well, but I think what kills a lot of people's interest in it when they can have uh, something when they can afford it and they can buy whatever they want, like an Escalade or a Navigator. The problem is the back. There's not as much space for this thing's cargo area as the, now the passengers got a good. This is a very comfortable car for passengers. I think the biggest problem is, and you can see the dual motor line, that when you see the line, that means it uh, has the ludicrous mode, as you can see, ludicrous plus. But I think what hurts this car is the uh, storage space, because there's a lot of people who they can afford to buy one of these things. It's just that they need more space to carry more stuff. Now you see people with those bike racks and you see people with, uh, you know, especially let's say if you want to tow a car. Yeah, these things can tow pretty well, but some people like, like I have an uncle who builds cars and he takes them to car shows like Carlisle. Um, some people want to be able to tow those big trailer hitches and they would prefer to be able to do it with a gas diesel engine so that this way they can be 100% certain that, uh, you know, that if they run out of energy or gas, that they can just take it to the gas station and they can uh, recharge it. Every time I stop, I'm taking uh, photos because I'm using them as thumbnails. So I'm using those photos as thumbnails. There. But yeah, that that's basically that. That's that's the Tesla Model X. I mean, we are already pretty much, I think like an app, like any Apple product, we know just about we know just about everything about this car by now because we've been shown this car so many times i mean you you probably know everything about this car it's just like an iphone almost they've marketed the hell out of these things it's weird because i've never actually seen a commercial it's just that you know being on youtube you you, you pretty much know everything about it so closing all doors Yeah, so we, we pretty much know everything there is to know about. These cars are fabulous cars, I would say, on the used car market, as long as you have a good interior passenger door. So that's pretty cool that you have the ability to do that because it's funny, this is a feature that's on Bentleys. Now, mind you, if I open that door, you can also close that door using the brake pedal. 
but you already know that. If you've never seen one of these cars before, then maybe you don't know that, but for the most part, you should already know that. <sighs> okay, so uh, basically that's my question to you. Which would you prefer to have? Would you prefer to have a Tesla Model X or would you prefer to have a Jeep SRT? This car could be a great second car to have. Like, you get, if, let's say you need one car to have your all wheel drive car in your uh, household. So that this way you've got a car to drive when it's raining and snowing. Um, but then let's say your second car is a race car. Like you have a Hellcat or, um, or, or a Hellcat wide body. I'm not gonna say like a, a Mustang or a Camaro because I don't really consider those race cars. I, I consider those boring. Um, so anyway, let's say you have like an AMG or, or a BMW or something and it's like an M series or whatnot. Or let's say you have a Porsche and that's your second car, but it's only rear wheel drive. This car is a great secondary car to have in your house to your race car. So this is like for the whole family and the race car is just for you. You know, it's like if you can get one of these used and not pay top dollar for it, it's great to have. It's really good to have. Now, some people would say, you know what, I'll save lots and lots of money. And what I'll do is instead I'll just get a uh, a regular four-cylinder Econobox SUV or crossover like the Toyota RAV4 or something like that. But you don't want to do that to yourself. If you really want a good 4x4, four four, don't count out the Jeep Grand Cherokee because you see that Jeep Grand Cherokee over there? Those are good. And I'll also say this, because I'm a Ford shareholder, I should also mention that the Ford Explorer is also a very large, spacious, very capable, very reliable. What you, you could, yeah, you, you know, you're not buying no Maserati right there. And I wish Dodge would make that Maserati into a Hellcat of some type and make it a Dodge product, but they don't do that. Whoa! Okay, yeah, so, cause you know, I, I felt that I was lagging behind a little bit. But see, that's the thing. These cars, these cars are cool because they have a hair trigger throttle. But uh, other than that, I mean, the driving experience could put you to sleep if you're not careful. And some people say, oh man, I'd never be bored if I had a car that could do zero to a quarter mile in, in like five seconds or something. Believe me, you can't drive like that all the time. The, one of the problems is most of these other people around you, they can't anticipate you as a driver. So it's always possible that you get yourself into a car accident because here you are doing rocket launches and these people don't realize that you have the ability to get to points on the road that they don't realize you have the ability to get to. They always are going to assume that if you're driving something this size that you're gonna be slower than you actually are, especially if they don't know anything about the car. If they try to do something like one of these really quick right or left turns and you're just driving straight, there's always the possibility that you could speed right into them because they make the turn not knowing that you could have gotten there so quickly. I'm pretty sure you understand what I'm saying. Uh, left turns, for example, are statistically the most dangerous driving maneuver you can make. Um, and uh, and that's, you know, that's the thing. People are gonna assume that this car is slower than it actually is just because of its size. But if once they understand these cars better, then they they won't make that assumption anymore. But for now, they're going to assume that these cars are slower than they actually are. So you have to be very careful. That's why driving these race cars and performance cars, they usually color them very brightly. So this way everybody sees you from a distance. So everybody will know that thing right there is fast and I want to give him his, his, his space because it's just like a Lamborghini. Lamborghini is always a very bright color. They want everybody to see that thing in that back mirror. They don't want you to be at a blind spot, especially considering you're so low. They want everybody to see you from a distance so that everybody knows that thing right there can outperform me, so I better just leave it alone. And, you know, that's just, that's you know, there's, there's, a, there's a huge psychology to driving these vehicles or anything basically on these roads. Huge psychology, you gotta know the rules. I know the rules of the road, basically. Yeah, so that's about it. So that, that was the question. I was like, you know what? If you could buy one of these cars right now, which would you buy? A Jeep SRT or would you buy a Tesla? Or if you were going to buy a Trackhawk or a Ludacris P100 
Tesla Model X. I have to say, the Tesla Model X is easily the best Tesla product that they have right now. The Y is going to outsell everything else, but it's not the best because of all of its limitations. What the Model X represents as more like, and by the way, you should buy stock in Fisker. You should buy stock in uh, uh, that Chinese company now. You should buy stock in, um, what else? Who else, who else, who else? Uh, Workhorse, because they're making electric trucks. Um, and if, if you can do it, buy stock in every electric company that you can afford, because the thing about it is electric cars are gonna end up taking over the road. It just, it's just, it's inevitable at this point. Some people might say, oh, well, why don't you just do all your banking at home? And I'm like, why would I stay at home and do my banking at home when I actually get to walk into the bank wearing my mask? I love doing this. <sighs> Might even drink your coffee. Good morning. How y'all doing? Oh, great, great. It's another day. <laughs> Oh, Hope y'all enjoy your summer. Oh, good, good. Can I get a uh, deposit slip? Sure, checking your savings. Um, checking, I think? Yeah, checking. 